Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be transforming this new 5th generation iPad Air into a desktop computer slash gaming console slash workstation. And we'll even take a look at some Nintendo Wii emulation using the Dolphin emulator on the 2022, otherwise known as the 5th generation iPad Air. So yeah, when it comes down to it, this thing is actually putting out some really great performance. I recently did a video showing off some GameCube, Wii, and PSP emulation on this new iPad. And it's using the same chip that was in the M1 MacBook Pro. So we've got the M1 chip here. This has 8 gigabytes of RAM and only 64 gigabytes of internal storage. This is the lower tier version of the iPad Air. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I'm a huge fan of tablets. My favorite line right now is the Galaxy Tab S8 line from the lower tiered S8 up to the Ultra. I personally have the Ultra and one of my favorite things to do with those tablets is use Dex Mode. If you're not familiar with Dex Mode, basically it turns your tablet into an Android desktop. Now I know Apple hasn't implemented anything like Dex Mode with the new iPads, but we do have video over USB Type-C. We've got really good controller support and we can use a mouse and keyboard with iPad OS, so I figured we'd see how this performs as a desktop computer. We'll also be testing out some gaming on an external display and emulation, but uh, I do have a few accessories that I'm gonna use with this whole mix here. I'm using a Bluetooth Razer mouse, and when it comes to the keyboard, I've got the new Fi Air 60. I will leave links to everything I'm using in the description. I've also got an Xbox One Bluetooth controller. It'll connect right up with the iPad. I did want to add a little external storage because I am a bit limited here given that I only have the 64 gigabyte version of the iPad Air. So I've got a 500 gigabyte Kingston SSD and we can't add apps to this but we can use it as external storage so we could store videos and larger files on that. And finally, to get this connected to a larger display, there's actually several ways to go about it. You can use a cheaper adapter like this with USB, it's got HDMI out and Ethernet or you could go with a dock, and that's exactly what I'm going to be going with. This was actually designed for the Steam Deck, but it does work with the iPad, and basically what we've got here is USB Type-C in, HDMI out, three USB 3.0 ports, Ethernet, and power in, in case you want to charge the iPad while it's connected. But keep in mind, if you've got a newer display that does support USB Type-C video in, you won't need a dock like this unless you want some of those extra features like Ethernet and extra USB ports. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and see how this thing functions as a desktop PC. Okay, so as you can see, I've got everything set up, and I'm using a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, but if you're using a dock like this, we've got those USB ports. You can always use a USB keyboard and mouse if you want to. As you can see on this 32-inch 4K display, we've got some black bars on the side, and we're not going to be able to get rid of those, basically because the iPad doesn't use a 16 by 9 aspect ratio like the monitor here. So those are going to be there. You can always use something called Overscan on your monitor to kind of fill it out a little more. And there are some second screen apps that do take advantage of 16 by 9 but most of the stuff will have those black bars. When it comes to extra storage, I've got that 500 gigabyte Kingston SSD plugged into the dock over USB. And while we're not going to be able to use this to store our apps from the App Store, we can use it for larger files. So transferring videos, photos, large documents, and things like that, it actually works out really well. iPad has a built-in file manager, and it shows right up here. And we can copy between that external storage, the Kingston Drive, and the internal storage, and vice versa. This actually comes in really handy if you're doing some video editing on your iPad and you're just running low on space. Using something like iMovie or LumaFusion, which I will show in this video, we can store large documents over here on that external drive so we don't take up all of the storage on the iPad itself. And with the latest updates to iOS, mouse and keyboard functionality has been really improved. Uh, you can definitely use a mouse and keyboard to navigate the full iPad, get kind of the full experience there. And using this as an everyday PC for everyday tasks like document editing, video playback, web browsing, this thing has plenty of power. I mean, even the older iPads did a really good job, but we've got that M1 chip here. And luckily, Apple really didn't dumb it down in the iPad Air. So we're basically working with the same kind of power that that M1 MacBook came with. And when it comes to Wi-Fi speeds, this has Wi-Fi 6 built in, but remember, since we're plugged into this dock, we could use the Ethernet port if your dock has one. And when it comes to video playback, I would just download the YouTube app from the App Store, or you could download Netflix, HBO Go, Hulu. We've also got a really nice little media device here, and it's going to output HD quality over this HDMI connection we have here. And so far, what I've shown you what this thing can do kind of in desktop mode is exactly what my mother-in-law and father-in-law would use their main laptop or PC for. Basically, just a little bit of document editing once in a while, some video playback, some web browsing. 
but this can go much deeper. So if you want to get into some photo editing, there are tons of photo apps on the App Store. You could use the built-in Photos app, or you could use something like Adobe Photoshop for iPad. Now this is one of those second screen apps that I was talking about, and basically on the larger display, we're only getting a preview. If you know how to change this or if it's possible at all, let me know in the comments below. I've kind of tried everything. But even the Photoshop shortcuts in the iPad version are the same as the full desktop version. And if you wanted to get some photo editing out of the way, you could definitely do it. It's not as powerful as the desktop version, but for basic photo editing, this would definitely get you by. Or you could go with a totally different app. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of them available on the App Store. Or when it comes down to just basic cropping, maybe a little bit of color correction, you can use the built-in Photos app, no problem at all. And this thing breezes through photo editing with that M1 chip. I've been messing around with Photoshop on iPad for the last few days, and even with several layers, I've gone up to around 10 layers, I haven't noticed any kind of hiccups, but I'm sure we could get more out of this. We do have 8 gigs of RAM. And when it comes down to it, you could also do some 4K video editing on this. Now I really wish they would bring Final Cut over to the iPad or iOS in general. Now if you're just starting out, I would recommend iMovie. It's actually really powerful on the iPad, very well optimized. Not as many features as the one I'm about to show you, which is LumaFusion. But if you're just getting into it and you want to do a couple movies a year for, let's say, a birthday or maybe just a family reunion, iMovies is where it's at and it's free on the App Store. But if you really want to get into video editing on the iPad or iOS, LumaFusion is definitely the one to choose. It's not cheap. It's actually $29.99. But if you're going to be doing mobile video editing, then yeah, this is something that you probably want to at least look into. But yeah, this is a very powerful application for video editing on the iPad. And right now I've just got a simple 4K video added one of their little filters here. We can go with some stabilization. It's gonna do it in real time for us. But you can set this up with a ton of different timelines. Scrubbing is super smooth on the M1 iPad. And uh, actually, if we go full screen with it right here, we can play in real time with all of those filters and everything that you've added. And as you can see, it is working with the mouse and keyboard. So yeah, there's a lot of people out there that could definitely get by just using an iPad as their only PC. If you want to connect it to a larger display, it's totally possible to do. You can also connect that keyboard and mouse if it makes it a little easier on you. And when it comes to document editing from the App Store, you can download Google Docs, you can download Outlook, or you could just even use Pages, which is a free Apple application. So I've just downloaded Pages real quick, and this is the first time I'm starting it up on the iPad. And there's lots of different templates built in, so if you need to do a project for school or work, you can probably find a template here, or you could just create a blank document. You can add bar graphs, charts, everything you need is here with pages. But I gotta say, one of my favorite things to do on this iPad while it's connected to a larger display is game. And Apple has added some really great controller support for a lot of these games here. And I've got an Xbox One controller connected to Bluetooth right here. Super simple game, we've got Among Us, you can play it on the big screen. Obviously, it is compatible with controllers, but when we move over to the higher end games like Call of Duty, Apex Legends, and even Genshin Impact, this is where the tablet really shines. Here's Call of Duty Mobile, and I'm totally maxed out from the settings. The only thing I don't have turned on is the extreme frame rate, and that's really because it's grayed out. We can only do up to 60 hertz on the iPad Air here because of the display that's built in. But this is definitely running at 60 hertz. I've also got God Rays on. Controller support is awesome with this game here. Same with Apex Legends. But yeah, you can definitely have a lot of fun gaming on a bigger screen with the iPad. And not to mention, all of the Apple Arcade games do support controllers. And finally here, I wanted to test one of my favorite games. Uh, this is Genshin Impact, and we do have full controller support with iOS. Unfortunately, on Android at the time of making this video, we don't have controller support unless you use a third-party app. And that's one of the big reasons I really do like playing this game on iOS. So my Xbox controller just works right out of the box. And since this iPad Air has that powerful M1 chip, we can basically max this out at the highest settings, 60 FPS, and it plays absolutely amazingly. And if you take a look here, I mean, it looks great on this external display also. So this fifth generation iPad Air does offer some really good native iOS gaming. Uh, if you wanted to stream from the cloud, you could use GeForce Now or Xbox Cloud Gaming, or you could even go with Steam Link if you want to. But we can also run emulators on this device without a jailbreak. Now what I use here is called Alt Store. 
Basically, we can sideload these using our own Apple developer account. It's actually free to use. And recently I posted a video showing off some GameCube, Wii, and PSP running on this machine. Runs absolutely amazingly, but I wanted to show you here because uh, it is possible to get this up and running, and it works on an external display really well. If you're interested in seeing the emulation performance that this thing can put out, I'll leave a link to that first video I created. But uh, here's Wii using Dolphin iOS. We've got Tatsunoko versus Capcom at 1440p using the Vulcan back in. These games run great. I mean, as long as the Wii or the GameCube game is compatible with the emulator, it's going to run it at full speed. And when it comes to PSP, we can use the Vulcan back end if you want to, but I went with OpenGL and I was able to max everything out at 10x. I really hope that in the future we do get the ability to easily sideload applications on these iOS devices like we can with Android right now. That's really what's been holding me back from swapping over from Android to iOS. But yeah, overall I do think this performs really well as a desktop PC. Now we're still working with iPad OS and basically we're just blowing up the screen, but for people who want to use a mouse and keyboard with a larger display, you could get by using something like this. They don't need something for video editing, they don't need something for AAA gaming. Basically just a larger display, mouse and keyboard so they can check their email, maybe a few websites every once in a while, and watch a YouTube video here and there. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. This actually worked out much better than I thought it would. Uh, you know, hopefully in the future we get some type of kind of 16x9 toggle so we can use that full display. But for now, I mean, using something like a 32-inch monitor definitely gives you a lot more screen than the iPad can offer. If you're interested in any of the accessories I used with this little setup here, I will leave links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this iPad, let me know in the comments below. I'll have this for a few more days, so you know if it's more emulation, more native iOS games tested, just let me know what it is and I'll see if I can make a video. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.